Sweet Summer Days is happening now at Whole Foods Market with sales on the juiciest fruits of the season, organic peaches, organic cantaloupes, blueberries, and strawberries. That's an epic fruit salad. You'll also find sweet sales on fresh Alaska sockeye salmon and halibut and grill-ready fruity marinades. Keep your wallet happy with aisles of savings from 365 by Whole Foods Market, like sparkling waters, frozen fruits, and snacks. Sweeten your summer at Whole Foods Market. Terms apply. If you've been feeling overwhelmed with anxiety lately, try listening to a guided meditation on the Meditation for Anxiety podcast. Meditation is a proven natural way to help you calm down and dissolve stress so you can feel lighter and happier. So subscribe for free today to the Meditation for Anxiety podcast by searching for Meditation for Anxiety on your favorite podcast player. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2233. Am I losing fat or muscle? By Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Welcome back to another episode of Optimal Health Daily. This is where I read to you from some of the best fitness and nutrition blogs on the web, kind of like an ongoing audiobook. And with that, let's get right to the post for today as we optimize your life. Am I Losing Fat or Muscle? by Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. One of my readers wrote, quote, I've been using a body fat scale to let me know if I'm losing fat or muscle, but I'm not sure how much I can trust it as the results seem to vary wildly. How can I be sure that I'm losing fat rather than muscle? End quote. The honest answer is that you can't, not with any degree of accuracy anyway. Body fat scales are largely a waste of time. Skin fold calipers can be useful in some circumstances, but even they have their problems. Even high tech methods like DEXA and underwater weighing can't be trusted at times. Tracking changes in waist size can be useful, but it's a method that also has a few limitations. For example, some people find it difficult to get the tape measure in the exact same position from one week to the next. Using some kind of anatomical reference point, such as your belly button, can make it easier to get a consistent reading. But if you're carrying a lot of abdominal fat, the belly button will often point downwards, which makes waist circumference very difficult to measure. As fat is lost, the angle of your belly button is going to change, which has the potential to skew the results. Even just a small change in the amount of tension applied to the tape measure can affect the accuracy of the results. So, What are you supposed to do? Rather than spending a bunch of money on expensive body fat tests, I think you're much better off using two simple metrics, your weight on the scales and your performance in the gym. Scale weight. The argument against using your scale weight to track your progress is that any loss in fat will be offset by a gain in muscle. That is, if you lose five pounds of fat and gain four pounds of muscle, the scales will show that you've only lost one pound in weight. While the theory sounds good, it doesn't always work that way in practice. Once you've moved past the overweight beginner stages of training, you won't be building muscle at anything like the same speed at which you're losing fat. While you can lose fat and gain muscle at the same time, you won't do so at the same rate. The best that most people can hope for is to gain a relatively small amount of muscle while losing a much larger amount of fat. For example, you might lose six pounds in weight over the course of a month. In reality, you might have lost seven pounds of fat and gained one pound of muscle. While the scales aren't a completely accurate way to track your progress, they will tell you if you're moving in the right direction. I also recommend that you weigh yourself every day rather than every week or every month. Some advise against the practice of weighing yourself daily, mainly on the basis that your weight fluctuates from day to day. But when you think about it, This is really an argument in favor of daily weighing. Let's say you weigh yourself once a week and that you stepped on the scales first thing this morning. Let's also assume that the scales show that you're one pound lighter than you were last week. Great, you think to yourself, things are moving in the right direction. But are they really? How do you know that today isn't one of those days when your weight happened to fluctuate downwards? And that if you weighed yourself again tomorrow morning, it won't have shifted upwards again. A single weekly data point isn't particularly useful when it comes to guiding your decisions about what to eat and how to exercise. 
So instead of weighing yourself once a week, weigh yourself every day. Then take an average at the end of the week. Any daily fluctuation in weight will be averaged out over time. Over a period of several weeks, you'll be able to see a trend. If the trend isn't downwards, you'll know that some aspect of your diet and training program needs to change. Performance levels. Provided your training program is set up properly, your performance in the gym is also a good way to gauge your progress. When you cut back on your carbohydrate intake, it's not unusual to see some kind of decline in performance during certain types of exercise. Your performance in this lowered glycogen state then serves as a benchmark against which to track your results. If your performance in the gym is improving, there's a good chance that, at the very least, you're holding on to the muscle you have. And by an improvement in performance, I'm talking about doing more reps with the same weight or lifting a heavier weight for the same number of reps. Muscle size and strength are not 100% correlated, and there are other factors, such as your nervous system doing a better job of using the available fibers in a given muscle that contribute to gains in strength. But for our purposes, the link is strong enough. If you're gaining strength, you're on the right track. Even just maintaining your performance in the gym while losing weight is a good sign that what you're doing is working. Someone who is very overweight and new to lifting weights will find it relatively easy to gain strength while dropping fat. As you get leaner, the rate at which you gain strength will slow down. Eventually, you'll reach the point where the best you can hope for is to simply maintain your strength. It's not uncommon for competitive bodybuilders to lose strength in preparation for a contest. What this means is that you'll need to modify your expectations as your body composition changes. All other things being equal, you'll find it easier to gain strength while losing fat when you're going from overweight to lean than you will going from lean to ripped. That doesn't mean you should stop trying to get stronger, but it's not something you should necessarily expect, especially once you've moved past the beginner stages of training. Tracking your weight on the scales and your strength levels in the gym is not a particularly accurate way to quantify actual changes in body composition, but it will tell you if you're on the right track and moving in the right direction. Most of the time, that's all you really need to know. You just listened to the post titled, Am I Losing Fat or Muscle? by Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. ¿Estás disfrutando de mi podcast? Thanks to Babbel, I know what that means. Do you? Instead of paying hundreds for a tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you speak a new language in three weeks. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real-life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching. And that's what puts Babbel ahead of the rest for me. It teaches you a lot of the lingo that you won't necessarily learn in school, but instead would learn only by speaking with locals. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash OHD. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash OHD. Spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash O-H-D. Rules and restrictions may apply. Sweet Summer Days is happening now at Whole Foods Market with sales on the juiciest fruits of the season, organic peaches, organic cantaloupes, blueberries, and strawberries. That's an epic fruit salad. You'll also find sweet sales on fresh Alaska sockeye salmon and halibut and grill-ready fruity marinades. Keep your wallet happy with aisles of savings from 365 by Whole Foods Market, like sparkling waters, frozen fruits, and snacks. Sweeten your summer at Whole Foods Market. Terms apply. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. A common question I get is about plateauing, meaning you might find that your training isn't progressing as quickly or that after losing weight consistently for weeks, that weight loss seemed to have magically stopped. Well, today's author, Christian, provides a very nice explanation for not only why this might happen, but how to break through it. Didn't catch how to break through the plateau? It was subtle, I know. Christian said, first, modify your expectations. Meaning, think about how quickly you expect to lose weight, gain strength, or whatever your goals are. Sometimes, 
We have to modify those expectations because the body has to catch up. Second, don't stop trying. Keep going. Stay the course and the results will follow. It just may take a little longer than you expected. All right, that'll do it for today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you back here tomorrow with another post and where your optimal life awaits.